Hello and welcome to another edition of the Sophie Scholl Society, the society that talks about the two forbidden subjects, religion and politics. Here, we're not afraid to delve into matters that many people would just soon avoid. And not only do we talk about them separately, we talk about them together, just as Hans and Sophie Scholl did in the Third Reich when they led an effort called the White Rose to distribute throughout the German people their protests concerning the Nazis mm. and their control over that society. And by the way, have you picked up your edition of the White Rose? There they are in this white notebook. There are six leaflets that were disseminated through the shoals, and they're online for you to copy. You'll take about uh, 15 pages worth of material there. Go to thisiscommonsense.com, and there you can pick up your own edition. You know, Sophie and Hans, as well as the rest of them, would take theology, philosophy, and use that as the basis for their political action. They also referred to others in the formulation of what they did. They read Augustine's uh, City of God. They also looked to other figures, which we don't know about, one of which was George Bernassos. He was a French author and a soldier in World War I. And here's one of the things that he said, which I think the Shoals took to heart. Bernasso said, a thought which does not result in an action is nothing much. And an action which does not proceed from a thought is nothing at all. So in other words, We've got to think about what we do. We have to have a basis for our action, and that begins at the level of thought. And that's why it's so important to have good theology as well as good philosophy as we delve into this issue of politics. And with me today, I'm so happy to have him here because I think of him as the Jonathan Edwards of Western New York. <laughs> Oh yes, I do. <laughs> Derek I'm Yoder. sorry to hear that. <laughs> Derek is the pastor of the North Collins Congregational Church, and he's such a wonderful expositor of the, of the Scripture. And if you have a chance, and you're in North Collins, by all means, listen, go to, and worship with the people at North Collins because you'll clearly hear the word of God. Derek, That's welcome. Kind of you. Thank you, Mel. It's good to be with you. That's yeah. A very kind and uh, enthusiastic introduction. Yes. Thank you. And the reason why I feel like Derek is wonderful to have here because he puts a lot of thought into things mm. and he makes us think. Mm. And I think you'll say some things that will make us think about the relationship between religion and politics and how important it is have good theology in the formation of political action. Mm -hmm. uh, Derek, when you think of this subject, what do you think of right off the top of your head? Well, what came to mind, first of all, even as you were speaking, Mel, is the importance of, of integrating how we think, uh, and as Christians, how we think about God, how we think about the world, and the difference that makes in how we live our lives. And so the statements that you just read uh, resonated with me. I think they're exactly correct. If we can't think well, we can't live well. And if we're not living well, well, it could be that we're not thinking so clearly. And so I, I, it, it seems to me that uh, the statements that you just read are right on the mark. They're worth our consideration. And so let's get to it. And why would it be important to start with the Word of God as we think about government and political action? Well, uh, certainly, certainly politics is part of it, but when you, when you go back to the beginning, you come up against human nature. And so as we think about what we're, what we're trying to formulate, there is the reality that cannot be escaped. We're sinners. Our hearts and our minds are darkened. And so the lens 
through which we view the world and ourselves and our governments is necessarily darkened and tainted. And so all that we know for sure, savingly, must come from the word of God. And so there really can be no surer foundation for this kind of a, of a discussion. And we really can't compartmentalize meaning we just can't uh, reserve one area in one aspect of life and totally cut it off from another aspect of life. We keep them distinct. But like you say, integration is so important. Yeah, yeah. The road to disaster uh, ordinarily is categorizing our lives, compartmentalizing our lives. And so I think, I think you're correct about that. And when we think, like you said, about how the scripture reveals the nature of man being dark and in that fallen nature, that has implications when we think about our understanding of government. It does. It does. Um, even a casual look at the scriptures remind us that government, uh, small g, um, is a provision of God's grace for sinners. Mm. Um, And so government is a good thing. It is a good thing. I mean, there's some, there are man-eating tigers out there. There are, there are famines that come. There are the logistical realities of, of plowing and reaping and gathering water. And when we come together as communities, uh, there are economies of labor and scale, production and so forth. Uh, These are good things. However, there also is a dark side to government. And I think the scriptures um, speak to both of those realities. And how so? Well, in terms of the in terms of the grace of government, um, as early as Cain, way back in the early chapters of Genesis, Cain you know, not he's not going to win the the good citizenship award, right? And yet God holds back his hand of judgment and provides a city for Cain. There is a place of refuge. And so there Cain from uh, what we can gather, there Cain develops a culture, right? It is you know, it's not a redeemed culture, but it is a culture where in Genesis chapter 4, there are metal- metallurgical products, music, uh, a, 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 a thriving community. And so these are good things for humanity. And with respect to the maybe the negative side we see in government where is do you think the error that can take place within human nature in the implementation of government well that um the, the, there are hints of that as early as genesis 4 genesis 4 as you know well mel it ends in this this um chaotic um uh, journey to uh, a, a parade of kings, and it ends with Lamech. Mm. Lamech, mm-hmm. who's the first bigamist, as far as we can tell, but also he's the first person to exercise injustice, as far as we know. So what's fascinating about Genesis chapter 4 is that we have Lamech, the king ruler, who does two things. He... Um, perverts marriage, but he also perverts justice. And so already, it seems to me, in Genesis chapter 4, we have the seed bed of government that is going to be hostile to family, hostile to justice, and so the subtext to the people of God is, hang on to your hats, right? <laughs> we're, in, we're in for a wild ride. Government is good, but government is tricky. And so we need to watch out for that. Thank you, Derek. We've laid a little groundwork here, and I hope you can join us for our next show of the Sophie Scholl Society.